Welcome back to Mass Effect everyone. So we're trying to finish off as many side quests as possible. We've got kind of four main side quests left that aren't like the collectathon quests. Uh, but before we do that, I'm going to read the codex because uh, I've let it pile up a bit. And we've got a bunch of extra stuff in here. So we've got a Sari military doctrine. I imagine we'll, we'll have picked this up after we spoke to um, the one who, the, the Asari who'd been uh, taken in by the Thorian. Okay, so the Asari military recording check, sorry, um, resembles a collection of tribal warrior bands with no national structure. Each community organizes its own unit as the locals see fit and elect a leader to command them. Units from popular cities are large and well equipped, while those from farm villages may be only a few women with small arms. There's no uniform, everyone wears what they like. The Asari military is not an irregular militia, however. Those who serve are full-time professionals. The average Asari huntress is in the maiden stage of her life and has devoted 20 to 30 years to studying the martial arts. Asari choose to be warriors at a young age and their education from that point is dedicated to sharpening the mind and body for that sole purpose. When they retire, they possess an alarming proficiency for killing. Huntresses fight individually or in pairs, depending on the tactics preferred in their town. One-on-one, -on -one, a huntress is practically unbeatable, possessing profound tactical insight, a hunter's eye, and a dancer's grace and alacrity. Biotics are common enough that some capability is a requirement to be trained as a huntress. Lack of biotic talent excludes a young Asari from military service. While fluid and mobile, Asari can't stand up in a firestorm the way a Krogan, Shurian or human could, since their units are small and typically lack heavy armour and support weapons. They are almost incapable of fighting a conventional war, particularly one of a defensive nature, so Asari units typically undertake special operations missions. Like an army of ninja, <laughs> they are adept at ambush, infiltration and assassination, demoralising and defeating their enemies through intense, focused guerrilla strikes. As a popular Turian saying puts it, the Asari are the finest warriors in the galaxy. Fortunately, there aren't there aren't many of them. Fair enough. Non-council races. So if we've got Krogan biology. The Krogan evolved in a lethal ecology. Over millions of years, the grim struggle to survive larger predators, virulent disease, and resource scarcity on their homeworld to Chanka turned the lizards into quintessential survivors. Perhaps the most telling indicator of Duchanka's lethality is the Krogan eyes. Although they are a predator species by any standard definition, their eyes evolved to be wide set, as in earth prey species like deer and cattle. Interesting. Yeah, because, yeah, that that's... So generally speaking, yeah, like, species that are treated as prey by predators tend to have a wider scope of vision sometimes a 360 degree of vision but they have a much narrower lane of accurate vision but they have a much wider range of peripheral vision compared to predators which have a much and uh, more narrow range of vision but it's much it's much uh, has, has much better acuity krogan eyes have a 240 degree arc of vision better suited for spotting enemies sneaking up at them than for pursuit. Physically, the Krogan are nigh indestructible, with a touch tough hide impervious to any melee weapon, short of a molecular blade. When they feel pain, it doesn't affect their ability to concentrate. They have multiple functioning examples of all major organs, and can often survive the loss of one or two of any type. Interesting. Rather than a nervous system, they have an electrically conductive second circular circulatory system a krogan can never be paralyzed they may lose some of this fluid but it can be replaced by the body in time the hump on a krogan's back stores water and fats that help the krogan survive lean times large humps are a point of pride being well fed implies the krogan is a superior predator the most widely known biological feature of the krogan is their incredible birth rate and rapid maturity once freed from the hostile cauldron of Tuchanka, the Krogan population swelled into a numberless horde. Only the Genophage kept them from outbreeding the combined council races. Now the rare Krogan females capable of bringing a child to term are treated like strategic resources. Warlords will trade them at diplomacy or, more frequently, fight wars over them. 
So they're, they're non -ca they're a non-council race. There's that Krogan statue though. At the I don't think I've ever clocked that they're regarded as a non-council race. I mean, I know that they were. I know in I know the Krogan rebellions was a war against the council, but I, I thought after the genophage, they'd maybe been accepted back in or something. I was I guess I was wrong about that. Guardian weapons. A ship's general area defense inter integration anti-spacecraft network. Guardian <laughs> consists of anti-missile, anti-fighter laser turrets on the exterior hull. Because these are under computer control, the gunnery control officer needs to do little beyond turn the system on and designate targets as hostile. Since lasers move at light speed, they can't be dodged by anything moving at non-relativistic speeds. Unless the beam is aimed poorly, it will always hit its target. In the early stages of a battle, the Guardian fire is 100% accurate. It's not 100% lethal, but it doesn't have to be. Damaged fighters must break off for repairs. Lasers are limited by diffraction. The beam spreads out, decreasing the energy density, watts per m squared. The weapon can place on the target. Any high-powered laser in it is a short-ranged weapon. Guardian networks have another limitation heat. Weapons grade lasers require cool down time during which heat is transferred to sinks or radiators. As lasers fire, heat builds within them, reducing damage, range and accuracy. Fighters attack in swarms. The first few will be hit by Guardian. But as battle continues, the effects of laser overheat allows the attackers to press ever closer to the ship. Constant use will burn out a laser. Guardian lasers, 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 lasers. Guardian lasers typically operate in infrared frequencies. Shorter frequencies would offer superior stopping power and range, but degradation of focal arrays and mirrors would make them expensive to main, would make them expense, expensive to maintain. Most prefer mechanical reliability over bleeding edge performance where lives are concerned. Solarians, however, use near ultraviolet frequency lasers with six times the range, believing that having additional time to shoot down incoming missiles is more important. Lasers aren't blocked by the kinetic barriers of capital ships. However, the range of lasers limits their use to rare knife fight range ship to ship combat. Technology. Communications methodology? Oh no. <laughs> As the population of the galaxy increases, the new worlds are settled. Timely access for home users and frontier settlements with underdeveloped communications infrastructures is a growing problem. The, um, the ameliorate bandwidth issues, a, a sophisticated array of data caches and virtual intelligence search agent programs are available. When a user submits a query, it's first routed to the data, da data cache on their colony or star system. At the cache, the user's search agent VI collates mountains of locally stored data to find the desired material. If the information isn't available locally, the query is passed along to neighboring systems and then outward in an expanding network. VI search agents in those systems replicate the search. If the desired information is found, it's compressed into a burst file and queued for transmission to the source system. The burst is assigned a priority based on the number of queries for it. The greater the number of queries, the higher the priority. When a new solar system is first contacted to the net connected to the net a selection of the most popular data is installed locally though storage hardware is cheap the capacity required to hold all the data produced every day by trillions of people on hundreds of worlds is not trivial it's not economical to store local copies of all the data available on the obscure topics just in case as colonies mature older and less popular chunks of data filter into them as a result of queries and placed in the local archive searches for obscure topics are increasingly likely to produce instant results as the archive grows okay okay great i enjoyed all of that except for the technology stuff that goes over my head all right um Cerberus is important as it's to do with ad the Admiral. Yeah, let's go and do this. We'll go to the Yangtze system in the Voyager cluster. Oh, sweet, we can... Yeah, we've got two missions in the Voyager cluster, so... That's where we're going. Let's roll. Star Trek Voyager Cluster. 
Right, Yangtze was where the Admiral's mission was. That's where we're going. I imagine he might send us a, a message. He did say he was trying to find them as well though, right, didn't he? Can't remember. He seemed very emotional about the whole thing though, which might be a bad sign. Patagiri. Patagiri is, has a thin atmosphere composed of neon and chlorine. Its frozen surface is mainly composed of silica with deposits of copper. During the long cold night, the chlorine in the atmosphere falls to the ground in the form of frost. Chlorium. No asteroid belts. Dregir is a small, barren rock world with a trace atmosphere of krypton and xenon. The surface is frigid and mainly composed of silicates with deposits of magnesium, aluminum and other light metals. Dregir has a weak magnetic field making it unsuitable for drive discharge operations. Very light gravity. Beryllium, sure. Alrumta. Alrumta. Alrumta is a small rocky terrestrial planet with a trace atmosphere of nitrogen and krypton. Its frigid surface is mainly composed of light metals with deposits, deposits, uh, deposit areas of frozen ammonia. Protein data disk, that's the last one, right? You detected a weak signal coming from the far side of planet Alrumta. Al Joker brought the Normandy around and your salvage team picked up a small escape pod trapped in orbit. There was a long dead Turian inside, along with a few personal items and a Prothean data disk. Binthu. This is the landed planet. Yeah. Renchato. Renchato is a close orbiting hot Jupiter with the traces of sulfur its hydrogen helium in its hydrogen helium atmosphere. The disruptive gravity well of the gas giant prevented any planets from forming nearby. Okay, this is where we're landing. This is where Cerberus is. Binthu has an atmosphere of carbon dioxide with a permanent haze of toxic chlorine and clouds of sulfur dioxide that periodically drop torrents of acidic rain on the surface. Its crust is mainly composed of sulfur with deposits of calcium. Like most worlds in the Voyager cluster, Binthu has only been charted with the, within the last 20 years by Alliance surveyors. It has no known native ecology. Data about the world is surprisingly brief and generic, painting a picture of an unpleasant and uninteresting place. Let's go. Alright, I think I'm going to take Liara and Ashley. Damage in biotics, yeah? Lots of stuff here. We've got lots of research facilities. Strange. That's closest, I'll pick up this. Yeah, gold first. Well, not gold, you know what I mean. Might be gold, I don't know. Palladium. What's that about? Ashley. I have no idea what to go for in you. Uh, the house got 10 bloody points, so. We can max out barrier and warp, yeah? I'm off of that. Eh, uh, let's unlock shotguns, I guess. I'll try it. I'll go on the way to unlocking shotguns. Eh, uh, Liara, did I add a biotic amp for you, yeah? That's a massive improvement. We've got uh, no better armors now. Liara, do you have any new armor you can use? It's better. Yep. Off to the research facility. Look at that. Yeah, we got a lot of enemies here. This is Cerberus group. Hello, boys! Now, let's just check these ruins out first. These Aztec looking ruins. Aztec Incas, is that the same thing? Oh, this isn't about a question, Marcus. Yeah, it's... <laughs> so disrespectful, Matt. Oh well. Right, let's see what's in here. Let's go, ladies. 
Cerberus group. We've got some revenge to dish out. Lots of revenge. Please, no Krogans. Holy! Is that a Rachni? What the hell are you guys doing? Missed. I don't care. Armor be damned. How do we use melee again? Ow. I don't appreciate this. Who would have thought they would have released the right now, right? Are there two Rachnis? Hello? <laughs> Queen will be mad at me if I kill one. Looks like Cerberus has other bases on this world, Commander. You've eliminated the threat of this facility. Continue to one of the other labs. Sure. Oh, we can't go in the bat rooms. Okay, that suits me. Okay, so they've got Rachni here. That's Was there some sort of connection to Cerberus on... On uh, Novaria? Can't remember, you know. Breaker, Armageddon, intimidating weapon, weapons names. Right, Cerberus. Go to the debris last. Uh, there must be something to click on, on that anomaly, but I can't see it. Whoops. Hello! Hello, turrets. Nice day for some death. In route. In route? What the hell does that mean? It's en route. I just discovered another Americanism. Or is there an actual different is that is that an actual different phrase that I'm just wrong about? Greetings, researchers. We got zombies. No biotics. I said no biotics. <laughs> Make sure that doesn't happen again. Damn it, Liara. You just blocked the way, Liara. And now I can't use lift again. Come on, we can squeeze through. Hey, Commando. What are you doing, mate? Uh, honestly.
No sign of uh, Kaku among the creeper corpses. He must be at one of the I other I wonder labs. what monstrosity Cerberus has been cooking up at the next base. Oh, wait. So is, is he already been captured? I can't remember what was said. He must have been captured already. And I'm just not remembering at all. A chameleon tool. Nice. And they suck. Now this Titan armor she's got on is just... It is the bee's knees. Stop giving me chameleon tools, they're crap. Ah, uh, there we go. The Unity Amp. They're the next level good ones, right? No, no they're not. It's the Savants that we want. Right, on to the next one. So they had Thorian Creepers, they've had Rachni, so I'm guessing they've somehow they've got all of this from Novaria, right? No, because the Thorians weren't there. They've just probably got moles in every kind of big tech agency, I suppose. Here we go. Greetings, turrets. Nice to see you. We're coming, Admiral. Hang in there. Come on, Admiral, you can make it, buddy. Oh, there's his body. Damn it. Remember the rules, guys. No biotic. <laughs> Commando my ass. Okay, I'm being too reckless. Just a bit anyway. Sack it. Oh, they've rachni these are the little poisonous rachni things. Right, on your P's and Q's, guys. One last stop to make, Commander. We owe Kahoku that much. It's over now. Admiral. You check for a pulse, but find none. Admiral Kwoku is, Koku is dead. Despite the ferocity of the creatures he was sealed in with, there are no signs of trauma on his corpse. The needle marks on his arms suggest a different means of execution. Oh, Cerberus must have tracked him down. Damn it. Well, at least we've stopped their dodgy operation. Okay. We'll go and check out the debris. Maybe we'll get in touch with someone at, uh, the, at Alliance Command or whatever. to the debris field. I don't know if these were like the, the leaders of Cerberus, feels like we might not stop them entirely, right? I feel like we might run into them again. So I don't know if we've totally avenged the Admiral. I don't know if there was a way to save him, I don't think there was. Alright, Jesus. Uh oh. No. Oh. Combat optics, I need to check out what they are. 
But to be honest, I'm happy just kind of yoloing my way through some of the, the basic combat scenarios, to be honest. Because we can take a hit now. So I'm alright Okay, we've got to go to the next, the other system. Which is to... Oh, Hades Dog. Cerberus has been conducting illegal genetic research in an effort to create an unstoppable army. You found Koku dead on one of their bases. Now you're the only one who can stop them. You found the location of a major major Cerberus facility. Facility. Head to Nephron in the Columbia system of the Voyager cluster and destroy it. Okay, we've got two quests in the Voyager system, right? The Geth stuff is... No. Oh, we're in the Voyager cluster. Yeah, the Columbia system. We've got some level ups. We'll do deal with them once we land. Is there a third system here? Yes, Columbia. Um, it doesn't matter. We've got missions in both, right? So. I can't remember which was which. That's why I said. Okay, asteroid belt is great. Nothing. Two asteroid belts and there's nothing. Damn you. Roma is a rocky terrestrial world with a trace atmosphere of Krypton and Xenon. The frozen surface is mainly composed of copper with deposits of calcium. Prior to the Alliance's expansion into the Voyager cluster, Gromar hosted one half of a Turian interferometric telescope, telescope array connected with similar telescope in the Attican Beta Cluster by an expensive chain of faster-than-light convoys. The two functioned as a single virtual lens with an effective aperture equal to the thousands of light years between them. The Turians use this to chart the terminus systems with great accuracy. Fascinating. Scans of the planet Gromar revealed a derelict space station in the late stages of orbital decay. The small team was able to recover some items of interest, among them a League of One medallion. Nice. On Tahita is an unusually large ice world with a core of silicate rock and light metals and a trice atmosphere of krypton and xenon. The crust is mainly composed of water ice. On Tahita's ice sheets show obvious signs of large-scale fracture and refreezing, centered on a massive crater near the South Pole. A recent extranet meme suggests that a Prothean ship crashed through the crust of the planet before the collapse of their empire and might still be recovered from the planetary core. This is purportedly the source of the planet's unusually high mass. Careful mapping of Antahita's gravity field by orbiting satellites have proved that the planetary core is entirely normal. Fascinating. The Prothean ship crashed. So maybe it's been preserved, yeah? Uh, Samarium. I don't think we've heard of that yet. Nephron. That's where we're going. Clogia. Clogia is a hothouse terrestrial world with a dense atmosphere of nitrogen and sulfur dioxide. The surface is scorching hot and mainly composed of iron with deposits of gold. The core of Clo Clogia is very hot and tectonically active. Volcanic eruptions are common and out gassing continues to add to the density of the atmosphere. The largest active volcano has a caldera nearly 100 kilometers in diameter and its basalt floods have covered an area roughly the size of the Earth continent of Australia. Interesting. Alright, we're off to Nephron. Nephron is a barren volcanic terrestrial world with an atmosphere of carbon dioxide and krypton. Its surface is mainly composed of sodium with deposits of magnesium. Aside from displays of geological beauty, including many spectacular volcanoes, this barren world is of little interest. Entries relating to Nephron in the astronomical database are sparse. Let's go. I'm going to take the same team. I can't remember if this was the Cerberus world. I'll check the journal. Got a fish memory today. Uh, yeah, this is the service facility. Good to know. 
anomaly, underground facility, and debris. This is all very mountainous, so I'm not sure how I'm going to get there. We'll go to the anomaly first. Uh, one more insignia. Just one more. Now, how am I supposed to get to that metal? I have no idea. This place is really rocky. It's a volcanic world, I guess, right? Okay, one of these worlds. Oh god, sweet noises. What is happening? Come on, be an insignia. No, no, this is... Oh, is that a sorry? No, that's a uh, slurry. What am I doing? The server soldier has an identification tag for Captain Barton. One of the Solari soldiers responsible for capturing the League of One. It's unclear how he came into possession of this relic. Is that a League of One medallion then? It's a Solarian ID tag. Okay, so we've got four. We've got the ID tags. Now we need some more medallions. Service facilities over this way. Heavily guarded, it seems. Not too heavily. Hey guys! Boom! Hey, I don't appreciate that. Snipe this. Honestly. Right, in we go, guys. Oh, we've got um some points. Right, my points. Uh we should just stick this into armor, I think. I'm all for it. Because I'm just shooting mostly now. We only need tactics for more difficult stuff, I think. Let's unlock shotguns for Come on, for Ashley, yep. And Liara. Yeah, that's uh, buffer singularity. Everyone's maxed out in their specializations, right? We should really get uh, medicine up, actually. Advanced neural shock is what I want. I need to remember that. All right, we're coming for you, Cerberus. The Admiral is counting on us. But hey, maybe they know we're coming, I don't know. I need to take cover actually here. This might be more difficult. Hey guys! Shields disabled! Ow! Um not F6, Mark, Jesus. Running round like a madman. Good job, Liara. Hello. I think so. Now there's bound to be some more through here. Let's pinch their stuff. Sure. Um, 
Okay, that could be good for, uh, for Ashley. No, 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 no. Still not a touch on the Titan armor. Anything else? Some storage lockers. A lot of storage lockers. <laughs> Jesus. Titan armor, please. Oh my god. Man, I hate having to sell so much stuff. Inventory management, man. That's nothing against the game. I, I, I dislike this in, in all games when you're just so overloaded with loot. I don't like this in The Witcher 3 and that's my favourite game. I mean, I, 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 I mod out the carry limit in The Witcher 3. I just, I can't be, I can't, I don't see the point. We're already, you're already carrying an unrealistic amount of stuff. Why would you put a limit on it? Do you know what I mean? We're already carrying 300 items. Why would you just, you know, why wouldn't you just make it unrestricted? Hello? Ready. You cautiously press a few buttons and an alarm chimes. The optical database is flashing itself quickly. You copy as many files as you can to your hard suit's internal computer. It's memory wiped, the computer shuts down, the files are sure to be encrypted, but you've got time to crack them. So do I need to actually do that? Guess not. Right. Oh, that's that. We are out of here. Unless more forces have appeared. Sure. Right, I think we've got one more thing to get on the planet, right? Right, off up the mountain. They're trying to bring down the mountain. Gandalf, we must turn back. just got to quote Lord of the Rings sometimes. It's just impossible not to. Alright, Turian Insignia. Come on. The last one. I don't think this is going to be it. Right, take us up, Joker. Then we've got another quest in the other system. Transmission oh. coming in, Commander. Oh. I think you're going to want to hear this one. Cerberus? Greetings, Commander Shepard. I represent a party interested in obtaining information on Cerberus activities. Get to the point. If you know something about Cerberus, you better tell me. I suspect I know less about Cerberus than you do. I am merely an agent for the Shadow Broker. You see, Admiral Kahoku contacted my employer looking for information on the location of any Cerberus facilities. We provided that information on the promise that he would turn over copies of all files gathered from the Cerberus systems to us. Okay. How did you find out about the location? You must have some connection to Cerberus. How else could you tell Kahoku where to find them? Information is our business, Commander. Through our contacts, we were able to determine that the Cerberus group was active in the Voyager cluster. Unfortunately, that was all we were able to find out. That is why we are so interested in acquiring copies of the files from you. Do you know he's dead, mate? Did you have anything to do with Admiral Kahoku ending up dead? We had no reason to harm him. 
was going to provide us with information about Cerberus. Information that is now in your possession. I'm not telling you anything, buddy. These are classified Alliance files. I'm not handing them over to you. Be reasonable, Commander. Cerberus was operating outside Alliance jurisdiction. You don't owe them any loyalty. <laughs> the Alliance is just going to file this information away in some archive. With no secret stays hidden forever. Eventually, someone somewhere will deliver it into our hands. I'll do one, well, mate. Might as well be you. Transmit the files to us, and you will be well compensated. But why do you want them? What are you going to do with this information? Information is a commodity. It can be bought, sold, or traded. Why my employer desires this information is not my concern. I am only the buyer. No, oh, I don't trust you, buddy. I don't even know your name. My loyalty is to the Alliance, not the Shadow Broker. That is unfortunate, Commander. My employer will remember this the next time you need something from us. <laughs> Are we playing The Walking Dead? What's going on? I will remember this. Clementine will remember this. <laughs> yeah, fuck off, mate. I don't care if you remember it. Uh, off to Amazon. We'll remember this next time in one of the future games when you need something from us. Yeah, okay. Commander, incoming signal from 5th Fleet HQ on the Citadel. Commander Shepard. Something uncomfortable has just come up. Yeah? In the first contact war, we fired a lot of espionage probes into Turian space. We just received a mission complete burst from one of them. That's quite a delay. Where's it been in the meantime? No idea. Lost in transit. These probes were built in a hurry after first contact. This sounds like a trap. What makes this uncomfortable? When these probes were launched, we didn't have any idea who we were fighting. We didn't want to risk aliens examining our technology. The probe has a demo nuke built in. A 20 kiloton tactical fusion warhead. About equal to the bomb dropped on Hiroshima back in the 20th. If somebody finds that probe, tampers with it. You don't need me to finish, Commander. Okay, why'd you need me to deal with it? Just because I saved Eden Prime doesn't make me an expert on nuclear munitions. I know. I wouldn't ask if it wasn't important. These probes have been classified for 26 years. The Council will call fusion bomb booby traps dangerous and irresponsible. The Alliance would face censure if they find this probe. I'm asking you because the Normandy can get on site quickly and quietly. It's in the Voyager cluster. It shouldn't be over there? It's in the Voyager cluster. That's the opposite side of the Alliance from Turian space. How did it get there? I don't know. It's possible someone recovered it safely and brought it there. So it's a trap. It's also possible it got very badly lost. It could have been wandering the relay network since the war. Where exactly is it? We'll get on it immediately, Admiral. And we'll be discreet. I appreciate that, Commander. Good luck. Fifth Fleet out. Alright. Where's this probe? Be around here somewhere, or is it crash landed on one of the planets? All right, uh, Tremar. Tremar is a standard hydrogen helium gas giant with traces of methane and hydrogen in its upper atmosphere. Nitrogen, sure. Cybin. A small rock and ice planet, Cybin has an extremely thin atmosphere of hydrogen sulfide and ethane. Its frozen surface is mainly composed of magnesium and silicates with deposits of iron. Cybin's crust contains significant deposits of green serpentine, a mineral formed by volcanic activity. This suggests Cybin was a more geologically active world in the distant past. Interesting. Serpentine. Nice! The last one! While scanning the planet Cybin, you discovered a large mine grid of geosynchronous orbit in geosynchronous orbit. With help from Navigator Presley, your recon team recovered a small unmanned probe marked with the Quadim outpost insignia. That's all of them, guys. Tell me we get something for that. Son Sonedma, Sonedma is the second of the Amazon system's arid super-terrestrial worlds. It is considerably less dense than its neighbour, the... Danuka, 
and has an atmosphere of carbon dioxide and ethane. Its frozen surface is mainly composed of iron-laced silicates with deposits of sulfur. Polonium. Great. I think we're going to be visiting this planet, so... Okay, Agabinium. No, nope, we're not. We're visiting this one. The red one. That would be beautiful. The Nuka is an enormous terrestrial world, nearly twice the size of Earth. Its environment is similar to that of Mars. Arid and a mix of craggy basalt highlands and sand-scoured deserts of iron-laced silicate dust. The Nuka's atmosphere mainly consists of carbon dioxide and argon, but the planet's mass is great enough that measurable amounts of helium and even molecular hydrogen remain trapped in its atmosphere. The planet's gravity well is deep enough that it that it's collected nearly a dozen small satellites, most captured asteroids. Its surface is scarred by many large impact craters, marking the final resting place of other other captured asteroids. Interesting. Okay, this is where we're going. Agubinium is a small terrestrial world with an extremely thin atmosphere of carbon dioxide and krypton. Though the planet has sufficient mass to maintain a much thicker atmosphere, much of it has been blasted away. The red giant Amazon is a long period viable star currently at the nadir, nadir of a 16 year cycle. At peak, its energy output doubles, lashing ag agubinium with intense heat and radiation. The crust is mainly composed of aluminum with deposits of tin. Much of the surface is coated with fine silicate dust, which easily penetrates the smallest cracks to foul machinery. Off we go. All right, let's take Rex, Caden. Why not? Look at this place. All right. So this is a new quest. Dude, where the hell is the Turian Insignius? Don't tell me that's it. Okay. Where are we? Right, so we're going here first. Alliance homing be homing beacon. Oh man, this is stunning. This is stunning. Look at this place, man. <laughs> Look at that. I feel like I could hear something then. Wow, that's amazing. Okay, we've got no enemies. Is this a mine? This looks like a mine. We've got tactical cover here though, weirdly enough, so we might have to fight on the way out. Right, chaps, you look ridiculous. Rex, you look absolutely ridiculous, mate. Mine shaft. That's the source of the signal. Thank this you, detective. Smells. I agree. This thing didn't crash. Somebody moved it here. Yeah, no kidding. The grasp of the obvious is inspiring. <laughs> There's still a nuke down there. Check your corners and watch your back. Right. Okay, you now. You don't say. It's probably Geth. No, not you. Right, Caden. A uh, couple of points. Stasis. Rex. 
Let's uh, he's got really good. Oh no, let's 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 boost up his assault rifles. Gives him some long range options, right? In case he can't run in, in case they've got some really heavy damage dealers. Uh, my guess is that this is Geth, or maybe Batarians. I don't know if Batarians were exclusive to that DLC though. We got we've got cover. Don't try and fool me, game. Okay, I think we're going to have to fight on the way out. Something's going to make me give me a jump scare here. Yeah, standard mining map. Two rooms at the end. We're going to have to fight on the way out. It's a trap. Only one of the rooms is accessible. Is it just gonna... That was a detonator. Someone just screwed us. <coughs> Shepard, at last. Elinos Haliat, at last? Have we met? My name is Elanos Haliat. I doubt you know it. Who do you think runs the Terminus clan, Shepard, huh? Thousands of pirates, slavers, criminals of every stripe? How should I know, me? I don't study the internal politics of pirate bands. The strongest leads. The one who kills the most men, seizes the most ships, pillages the most colonies. Three years ago, I was the strongest. I used my influence to assemble a fleet. We would drive your kind out of the verge. Uh, that, this sounds like the guy from Horizon Zero Dawn. What's his name now? He's he's just got that he's got that of overly clear diction on everything. Fleet. Oh, you were in charge of the Blitz. Wait, three years ago. Skillion Blitz wasn't three years ago. Elysium? You're the one behind the attack on Elysium. I was the motivator, the instigator, the one who promised glory and riches for sacking the largest human colony in the cluster. The one blamed when it failed. Failed! I was ruined when your kind held against the Blitz. What better way to recover my reputation than by eliminating the first human spectre? Joker. My crew will come for me. Oh, let them. We'll be ready. An Alliance warship would make a fine prize. Oh, and if you haven't noticed, the oars here are laced with heavy metals. I'm afraid your suit radios aren't powerful enough to transmit out. I'm coming for you, buddy. You'll see me again, Halliot. Count on it. <laughs> I rather doubt that. Goodbye, Shepard. What do we do now, Commander? I'll think of something. I don't know. Let me think. You two, see if there's anything in here we can use. There's no time to get out. You have to disable the bomb before it goes off. Sure. Let's try not to fail. And kill everyone. Oh, Jesus. Realize there were three. Yes, ma'am. Wait, so what? Are we, are we locked in apparently? Oh, right. Let's see what's in this place an elevator, apparently. You've not thought this through, buddy. High explosive rounds, sure. Yeah, you didn't think this through, did you, mate? Okay. 
Okay, that was the worst uh, ambush of all time. He left us with a clear exit. <laughs> I guess that there would have been a way to fail that if you didn't have the Omni Gel and you didn't have the decryption abilities with you, I guess. Oh, look at that view, man. That's insane. I am going the right way, aren't I? No, I'm absolutely not. Crap. Oh no. Oh well, this place is beautiful anyway, so it's all good. If only we could sprint for longer. A four year old has better stamina than this, Amanita. Come on! <laughs> Come on. Have we got company? Yeah. Hey guys! There's Krogans down there. Caden's <laughs> dead. Okay, this was really foolish. everyone why would you just wait outside for us mate Halliot went I can't believe Caden just got just rinsed then uh, Halliot went through a lot of trouble to draw you here a pity it ended like this for him at least now that you're above ground your suit radio has a re-established connection with the Normandy time to get the hell out of here indeed wow that was a mess I under right, that's the last time I'm going to underestimate a group of enemies, especially when we're walking around in the open like this. Um, what have we not investigated? I can't remember where we landed. I think we went straight there, didn't we? Right, let's uh, quickly pick up these last two things on the planet. Oh no no no. We picked this up, didn't we? Oh no. No. We did not. Sure, let's do it. The Merce Camp? Oh right. Did they pinch the, the Mako or something? Yeah, they must have done. Heading out. Uh, an artifact. Another Turian insignia. Book of drawings, including one. Right. That's weird. I thought we had them all. Oh, okay. 
I was really hoping for some sort of, but there might still be some sort of payoff for that. Anyway, right, I'm going to have to end the episode there, guys. I'm overrun with my time here, so I hope you enjoyed this one. We found the Admiral. We got rid of Cerberus Group. We got drawn into a trap here, which was a pretty obvious trap, but nevertheless. So, yeah, we'll pick it up from here next time. Hope you enjoyed it. Leave me a like if you did, and just remember, everyone, never trust. And on crate, I'll see you back on the Normandy.